Hello, I'm Amy of the Genealogy and Local History Department of the Kokomo Howard County Public Library. KHCPL offers many, many databases for your use from home with a library card. In this video, I would like to give you a brief overview of some subscription databases you can use in your family history research. Detailed search strategies for these databases will be explored in other videos. So let's get started. Begin here on our homepage, www.khcpl.org. Go to the link Family and Local History and go to Genealogy Databases. And here you can see the databases we offer. You must have a library card to access most of these. So keep your card handy as you will need the number on the back of your card to log in. Each of these databases have something, some things in common. All of them have a storage component, which is an email, shoebox, notebook, or ability to download. All of them have a how-to tutorial or help screens. And in some cases, the information overlaps from one database to another. For example, Ancestry, Fold3, and Heritage Quest all have census records. So, let's look at the African American Heritage Collection. And first off, we put in the library card number. And log in. And here we are in African American Heritage. These are historical records for African Americans. And they include federal census records, marriage and cohabitation records, military draft and service records, and some registers of slave and freed persons of color, Freedmen's Bank, and many more. There is a community of, for networking. You're welcome to join. The Black Genesis is a state-by-state -state resource guide and there's some consulting and reference how-tos. Let's search the collection. I've already chosen a name to show you what one of the searches will do. So I'm going to type in the name Davis for the last name. First initial was C, the state he was from is Tennessee. I'm going to drop down menu. And the year was 1871. Hit the search command. And you can see it has searched several databases, several collections, and came up with two hits on Freedman's Bank. Click there. I'll take the first one for C. Davis, Tennessee, Memphis in 1871. This is Freedman's Bank. And you will soon see an image of the document from Freedman's Bank. There is the image. C. Davis, the date this document was produced is September 28, 1871. It says he was born in Nashville, brought up in Lafayette County. His residence is Church Street in Nashville. He's 27, complexion, black. He works for a railroad, He's single. Here's his father's name, his mother's name, his brother's names. This is what I find interesting. In the remarks, it says, expects to go back to Nashville soon. Wears a white broad brimmed hat. He's tall and thin. Very interesting information here. So if you have any African American heritage at all, this would be the database to search. Okay, we're gonna go on to the next one which is Ancestry Library Edition. Normally, this Ancestry is not available outside the library, but in this case, because of the COVID-19, we have uh, been given permission from Ancestry to broadcast this one. Once again, my library card number has gone in, and we're redirecting to Ancestry. Ancestry has 4 billion names in over 4,200 collections. So at the top, you will see some ways of searching. The search 
bar, there are message boards, a learning center, which has many tutorials and aids for learning. There's a charts and forms section. You can download some charts. And there's always a list of their newest collections. Waiting for a response. And you can see collections that have been either updated or are new to the system. Let's go back to the search command. All categories, because I want to do just a broad search. I'm going to put in one name, a surname that is frequently misspelled, but a bit unusual. Now, sometimes we find that less is actually more. You can see there's lots of things you can put in here. You can fill up all of the spaces with all the information you have. Sometimes that narrows it down too much. So let's, let's just say I want to look for this name with the exact spelling. I could pick any of these other choices, but I want it exact. And I'd like to find out how many people by that name are in this database and they are from Indiana. Again, I'm going to say exact to this space and hit search. Now what has come up here are 503 hits on that name. They're by categories. I can choose just a category if I'm interested or I can go through them each one by one. Just for curiosity, let's look at the first document and see what it says. For Paul Arthur Ortstadt, there's a transcription here. There's an opportunity to look at the record itself. And this will be a World War I draft registration card. And you can see that it is in his handwriting. He gives his address, his date of birth, his occupation, where he worked, and the uh, next of kin. There's two pages to this. This is the back of the card. So this is the type of thing you can find on Ancestry. And at this point, we're going to move on to another database. We're now going to Fold3 History and Genealogy Archives. Fold3 is primarily military records, U.S. military records, and many of them are original records. The name Fold3 comes from the traditional fold flagging ceremony, and there are nearly 560 million records in this database. Access the resource. Here again, we need the barcode. And sign in. Now, Fold3 has different ways of looking at things. You can actually do something. You have a search command. You can browse. You can see memorials that people have put in to this system. Since I looked for Ortstadt earlier, let's let's look at that name again and see how that uh, what kind of names would be in here. What kind of people? Search all records for Ortstadt. And let it work a minute. Here I have two hundred twenty-five results. This is still loading. We could look at the first one for John W. Ortstadt. It's a headstone application. And we're still loading. Here we go. So we've got too much of a screen here. You can see that this is for John Ortstadt. He was a in the 128th Infantry, the 32nd Division. He's from Edgerton, Ohio. Annie Hortstadt, perhaps his wife, has requested a headstone. He died in 1953. So the government will provide a headstone for him for that. There's another thing you can do with Fold3 that is very interesting. You can browse by conflict. 
Again, this is taking a few minutes to load. Yeah, it says it's not responding. See if we can refresh this and get it. There we go. Okay, there's your, your response for ortstat. Let's move to the browse command. This is the opportunity to search by conflict. So you have all the conflicts here up to recent wars. Perhaps you would want to look for an ancestor who was in World War I. Perhaps it was an airman who died in the Great War. Here's the theater of operation. Pick one that would fit, um, perhaps from the Royal Air Force. I'm just moving across the line. There we go. And here it is by surname. Let's see what happened here. Benjamin Sidney William Banks. And there should be some records for Mr. Banks. This is some information. He was killed whilst flying. Um, there is not a original record for this gentleman. I hope, though, that you get the idea of how to work this one. I'm going to move on. That was fold three. Let's move to the next one, which is Heritage Quest Online. Heritage Quest Online has several databases in it. It's for family history or local history research. It includes over 24,000 book titles. There are census records here. There's something called PERSI, which is the Periodical Source Index. It's a subject index covering 6,600 genealogy and local history periodicals. There are Revolutionary War Pension and Bounty Land Warrant Application Files. Again, here's Freedman's Bank and the U.S. Serial Set. So we will access this. Library card number. Wait for it to load. And here is Heritage Quest. This one, I will go to the search command. Because many of these things are probably familiar to you, like census records, wills, and probates, what I would like to do is scroll down and show you what a U.S. serial set would be. And that's where you search memorials and petitions and private relief actions from Congress. And this is um, time frame 1789 to 1969. I've already chosen a name. I'm going to look for someone who was in the early Kokomo history named Andrew Clark. And I'm going to put his name and then the place name. I'm just going to say Kokomo and search. We have one hit, something called the Petition of Andrew Clark. It was dated 1874. The author is Augustus Summerfield Merriman. Democrat Senator from North Carolina. It's a private relief action and we'll see what this is. I'm going to enlarge it a bit so you can see it better. In the Senate of the United States, a report. The petitioner became liable to do military service under the draft of October 15, 1864. And he alleges that he employed a substitute, as he might lawfully do, and paid for such substitute $950. There is no proof before the committee that he paid that sum, but the War Department seems to take it for granted that he did so. Following is a long explanation by Mr. Clark of what he did and what he paid for. There's a second page to this. Again, talking about. Mr. Clark, and at the very end, it says the committee think under the circumstances that the petitioner is not entitled to the relief prayed for and beg to be discharged from further consideration of the petition. So evidently he did not 
become reimbursed for that money he spent for a substitute to go to the Civil War for him. And these are petitions before Congress, which can sometimes be very, very interesting and give an awful lot of family history. I'm going to move on to the Howard County Memory Project. This is a database of all things Howard County. You do not need a library card for this. It's free and open to anyone who should choose to look at it. We have files, funeral notices. We have uh, the Howard County Extension Homemakers, collection of Howard County High School yearbooks, some land records, military records, businesses. But I think just for starters, I'm going to put in a search for a man named Henry Quigley. And this man is interesting to me because as a very tiny child, I saw him across the street and decided he was my grandfather, which he wasn't, but I adopted him. So let's find out a little bit about this man I adopted. We have a list of honorable discharges registered at the courthouse in Howard County, World War I military discharges. Again, another listing like that. Here's one, marriage records. So maybe we'll find Mr. Quigley's marriage record. Wait a minute for it to come up. There we go. And this is a digital image of Henry Quigley's marriage record. These are full of genealogical information. Henry Quigley was born in Logansport in 1888. He currently, at the time of his marriage, lived at Fort Benjamin Harrison, and his occupation was Army. Down here, you'll find that he was married to Ruth Collins, and here is her information. And so you have here the original, an image of the original marriage record for Mr. and Mrs. Quigley. In the list of hits. There's something else that could be found his interesting. Under local history, we have a list of the mayors of Kokomo over time, and we see that Mr. Quigley was a mayor of Kokomo from 1930 to 1934. So there, I found out a little bit more about the, the man I adopted as a grandfather, and that is in the Howard County Memory Project. Moving along again, we go to Newspaper Archive and Newspapers.com. These are two separate newspaper, full text newspaper databases. They have some overlap, but not entirely. So it pays to look at both resources when you're trying to find something. I'll start with the Newspaper Archive. This one is not requiring a library card number. As you can see, it is worldwide, covers many countries. Be careful, however, these papers are probably in the language of, the, of origin. So it depends on how your Japanese is as to whether or not you could read one of those papers. All the states are covered. I'm going to look at Indiana specifically. And again, here are all the cities that are covered within the newspaper archive. Different years, different time frames. So you'll have to look at your area closely to see if your time frame is covered. If I click Kokomo, you will again see that there are several newspapers covered. I think I'll just look at all of them for today's um, demonstration. And let's look for Mr. Quigley one more time. So I'll type in Henry Quigley and hit the search. Well, here we go. I, I have an awfully large number. There are ways to narrow these down, but that will be covered in a different video. In the meantime, just glancing at some of these, this one looks good. Look at all those photographs. And this is January 4th, 1930, newspaper, Pokemo Tribune. And here is a picture of Mr. Quigley. He is the new mayor. And pictures of many other of the people who were elected or appointed for positions. 
That's a nice finding for somebody looking for someone. Okay, I have one more database. We're going to do newspapers.com. This says Indiana Newspapers. It's actually been upgraded, so this is also a worldwide database. And we go from outside. Here we go again with that barcode. And sign in. This has a little bit different search strategy than the newspaper archive. It's just a matter of getting used to which database you're in as to how you look for something. This one you can, you have a search command. You also have um, papers, so you could determine what papers are in the collection. But I think in this case, I will just do a free word search. I'm going to, one more time, Mr. Quigley, but this time I'm going to put him in quotes so I get just this exact phrase. Henry Quigley. And in a minute, we have over a thousand hits, but you can see some of them are here from Kokomo. I think I'd like to stay with just Indiana. So here I can narrow it down by the state. I'm still going to have an awful lot to look through. I know the year he died. Maybe we could find an obituary. He died in 1969. And we have two matches here. Let's take a look at this one. And yes, it is saying that he died. Unfortunately, the image is very poor. I would probably continue looking a little further to see if I could find more. But there are pictures of Mr. Quigley. He uh, evidently was quite a character. So that, that is a very brief, brief overview of the databases that we use a lot in the genealogy and local history department. These are powerful databases, and I've only touched on the surface of what is available in each of them. So watch for more programs covering individual databases. Thank you for sticking with me. Good night.